Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Welcome to the 2017-2018 Teacher Workshop Series. Today we're working on number 35 on the new general curriculum math subtest. This is a nice geometry problem. It's, it's got a real life scenario that mixes in some core concepts in geometry. This is a great one to work out. We're going to start by reading it over, and as I read over this problem, I want you to focus on what's happening in the problem so you understand the scenario before we get to the math, okay? Let's start by reading it over. Visualize what's going on. Here we go. It says, to measure the length of a winding path through a city park, a park manager rolled an instrument consisting of a wheel with a 10-inch radius along the path. The wheel made 200 revolutions. If 3 is used as an estimate for pi, approximately how long is the path in feet? Pause. Read that to yourself. Read it to yourself and identify the central images. Like, for example, we're talking about a path through a park. We're trying to find the measurement of that path. Is that right? And we're using an instrument that consists of a wheel. So first, visualize the park. we got some park out there. And there's a there's a path that's traveling through this park. And, and we're going to be using some sort of instrument. One of those, uh, we, a wheel that, that has one of those clicky things where every time the wheel spins around, it kind of gives off a click, a rotation. Every time that wheel does one rotation, it clicks. And eventually, our, our wheelie clicker thing here, as we stroll along this path, it it rotates 200 times. Well, let's think about that wheel for a moment. Let's draw a better picture of that wheel, that instrument. It looks something like this. It's got that little the wheel part. It they tell us that the radius of this wheel, the radius, that's the distance from the center of the circle to the outer edge, is equal to 10 inches. And every time this, this wheel rotates, makes one revolution around, right? It clicks. It makes 200 revolutions. Now, this revolution is the outer edge of the wheel, or circle. And another way of, of describing that is to say it's the circumference of the circle. When we talk about the circumference of a circle, we're talking about the distance around the circle. Now, in this problem, it never mentions circumference, right? There's no, what is the circumference of a circle? It's talking about wheels through parks on a path. So this is just an added level of complexity to the problem. They give you a real life scenario and you've got to make the connection. Hey, I've got to find the circumference of this wheel or circumference of the circle. You've got to bring that into the test, which means you have to understand circumference and how to find the circumference of a circle to answer this question. Well, what's the formula for circumference? You've got circumference is equal to 2 pi r. This is the formula used in geometry to find the measurement of the distance around a circle. And we can do some basic substitutions right now for the distance around this, this circle or wheel. 2 times pi. Now, they give us an approximation for pi. We don't have to use 3.14. They say, hey, just use 3, all right? And for radius, they tell us the radius is 10, 10 inches. So when we multiply these out, 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 10 is 60. Our answer is 60 what? 60 inches. One revolution around the wheel is 60 inches. So we got circumference is equal to 60 inches. Now, the answer is supposed to be in feet. We have a measurement in inches. Before we do anything else, we've got to convert the circumference that's in inches to feet. How do we do that? Well, there's a lot of different ways to do it. We could, we could just take our 60 inches here and do 60 divided by 12 to convert this 60 inches into feet. How many times does 12 go into 60? Four times? Let's try five. Five times two is zero, carry the one. Five times one is five, plus the one is six. It goes in evenly. That means 60 divided by 12 is five, so our circumference is really five feet. All right, now we know that one rotation, it's 60 inches or five feet, and we're trying to find the answer in feet, so we're gonna use the five feet for one rotation, and we're going 200 times, so we're going to take that 5 times 200, multiply them out. Let's see, 5 times 200, we got a, 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 extra zeros is 1,000, 1,000 feet. 
That means the path through the park is a thousand feet. The answer is B. Team, there's a lot of ways in which this problem could uh, go wrong, right? One of them is with this right here. You may get to the 60 inches, but then you might be very tempted at this point to be like, hey, circumference is 60, and we got to do that 200 times. 60 times 200, well, 6 times 2 is 12, plus 1, 2, 3 zeros. Oh, the answer here is 12,000. Oh, D is the answer. And, and that's very tempting because it's very easy to, for, to miss that this is inches and you're supposed to convert into feet. And D is right there screaming, pick me. You've got to remember that this right here, this calculation right here, is in inches, not feet. If you had done 60 inches times 200 and got in 12,000 inches, it's okay to get up to here. But you've got to remember at that point there, you still got to convert this into feet. So what would you do? Well, you would divide 12,000 inches by 12 inches to convert this to feet, and you would still get the answer of B. So team, all I'm saying is this. Be very careful as you read over the problem. Make sure if the problem's asking for feet, and the answers are all in feet, and they give you something in inches, make sure you do the conversions before uh, getting to your final answer, okay? All right, team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. The answer here is B. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day. Take care. Team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Welcome to the 2017-2018 Teacher Workshop Series. This year we're holding workshops in math, science, English and history, early childhood education, foundations of reading, ESL and SEI. These are hands-on workshops designed to help teachers pass their teacher certification exams. I encourage you to check them out. We're holding them in Massachusetts, New York, North Carolina, California, New Hampshire, Vermont, Connecticut, and a couple other states. I encourage you to check out an upcoming workshop. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Take care.